Hey, what's up guys? It's Tech Zoomer talking to you here. And in today's video, I wanna talk about the iPhone 15. But before I do that, just wanna say sorry guys, this video won't be as good of a quality as normally because I'm in a hotel room, the lighting conditions are not perfect, but this is what I got. So if you want to see my video today and watch my video today just because of the content, then stick around. But if you don't really enjoy this quality, then well, what can I do? Thank you for watching. But still, the iPhone 15, it's the topic of today, so let's talk about the next iPhone that is coming in the next couple of weeks. So the iPhone 15 will be coming on the second Tuesday of September, as always. And the leaks, the leaks are very coherent this year. It feels like this year we know everything. It feels like this year the leak has got it everything correct and we don't expect anything new from the newest iPhone, the iPhone 15, 15 Plus, 15 Pro and 15 Pro Max. But, but that's not true. Every year, Apple surprises us, and, and I think that this year we are getting some type of surprise. One thing that is not a surprise though, is the USB-C on the iPhone. Yes, USB-C is coming for the iPhone 15s, the iPhone 15, the iPhone 15 Plus, the iPhone 15 Pro, and the iPhone 15 Pro Max. But be careful, because this won't be the same rollout. The iPhone 15 and 15 Plus, they will feature USB-C, but this USB-C won't be as fast or as powerful as the iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max's USB-C, Thunderbolt port, because like the name says, these Pro models will feature the Pro Thunderbolt port. So Apple will give it a Pro name, I don't know, maybe Pro Thunderbolt or Thunderbolt 4 ports, and these would be insanely fast, like 40 gigabytes per second speeds, just like the speeds of the Thunderbolt 4 port. But here's a big but. The iPhone 15 and 15 Plus will feature only USB-C 2.0, not USB-C 3.0 or even Thunderbolt speeds. This is really bad because it will have the same lightning speeds and I know, it's weird. Switch to USB-C just to have the same speeds? Why Apple? Why? But again, who cares? USB-C is coming and if you are getting the iPhone Pro models, then your transfer time from your iPhone to your Mac will increase very, very much. But if you buy the iPhone 15 and 15 Plus, be also happy because these phones will now be even more compatible with every single other cable. You will can find so USB-C cables everywhere. Now every device charges the USB-C. So a one port system is the best way to go. I'm really excited for iPhone to switch to USB-C and finally, finally finish the transition to the one port universe. Then of course, the new iPhone 15 and 15 Plus, the normal paced iPhones will get dynamic island and a new design. This new design will be applied to every iPhone. The new less squared off edges. So the edges will be a little more curved and less squared off so it will be more comfortable to hold in the hand. But the iPhone 15 and 15 Plus will feature aluminum sides while the iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max are currently leaked and rumored to have titanium sides. If this happens, expect the prices on the Pro models to increase because titanium is not cheap, manufacturing titanium is not cheap and trust me, when a titanium device is released, oh God, it's going to be a big, big thing. Like the Apple Watch Ultra that I have right here has titanium, it costs $800 and this is this small thing, piece of titanium. It's like a piece of engineering just to have this very well machined titanium only cost $800, the same as a stainless steel. So there's still a bit of hope, a glint of hope that Apple will increase the prices on the iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max. But again, if they're adding the periscope lens and titanium, you better watch out. These iPhones will be at least $100 more expensive. But going back to the iPhone 15 and 15 Plus, these devices are also rumored to have Dynamic Island, like I told you. And Dynamic Island is such a weird thing and such a mixed feeling feature. Because on my iPhone 14 Pro Max, I have Dynamic Island and I've had it for almost one year now. And I gotta say, it's the most gimmick and most cool feature that the iPhone 14 Pro has. And it's weird, I know, because it's a huge gimmick. Trust me, it's not more than that. But <laughs> it's cool, it's really cool. It gives you these nice animations, it gives you this very glanceable and very important information, can give you the notifications on top, can give you the status of some type of delivery or some type of phone call on the Dynamic Island. All of these quirks and features on the iPhone 14 Pro Max, they look insane and they actually change the way you use your iPhone. And in my opinion, I cannot live without it. But again, that's for me. For normal people like my father or my brother, don't, don't really care about Dynamic Island. They don't even know that it exists. So why? Why is Apple putting on the normal iPhones? Well, maybe it's just for design symmetry or maybe because it's cheaper now to use these panels instead of the older notched panels. I don't know. But one thing that I know that it makes lots of sense that Apple will add Dynamic Island to the newer iPhones. And of course, I hope, I just hope 
that this increases the adoption for developers because more people with newer iPhones, like two generations of iPhones, will have now Dynamic Island, which will push developers to put even more cool features on their apps for Dynamic Island. Trust me, this will be a big thing for the future of the iPhone 14 Pro and even 14 Pro Max users because more Dynamic Island support is coming, newer iPhones with Dynamic Island means millions of more phones, millions more of customers, and I think that developers will make some cool things with this feature. This is just a request for me, this is not a leak, but I want Apple to make more features and bake more features on iOS for Dynamic Island. Because I think, I think if they do that, it will also push forward the adoption on this very, very cool feature. Let's not talk about the displays, because I don't think we are getting much better displays with the iPhone 15 Plus and Pro and Pro Max. I don't think so. I think we are getting marginal upgrades. But the Pro models are rumored to have even smaller bezels. It will be the smallest bezels ever on a phone and they will be completely uniform. So renders have leaked and people have made renders of what this could look like and they are beautiful. This screen looks insane. If Apple can remove that notch or that dynamic island in the, in the next like two years, we have reached peak iPhone display design. So I'm really, really excited for that future. But as you can see, the display looks insane. Hence, for the features and the specs, we are not sure. We are not sure if Apple will keep using the 120 Hz ProMotion display that it uses on the iPhone 14 Pro Max. This display is really good. It has a peak brightness of 2000 nits. It's really, really bright. It's really well made and the contrast is insane. The OLED display has no issues with the burn-in. The only thing that I want Apple to correct is the always-on display. Give it more features, give it more utilities. Currently, I don't use it. It drains too much battery. I know you fixed it on the iOS 16.2 upgrade, I think, but still, I want more customization. I want more things out of my always-on display. I don't use it. I got my Apple Watch. Why would I waste battery on an always-on display? But again, will Apple bring always-on display to the iPhone 15 and 15 Plus? We are not sure. One thing is for sure though, these iPhones won't have a promotion display. So I don't think Apple will bake a 1 to 60 Hz variable refresh rate display to add up always on display. I don't think so. I think Apple will keep this feature a pro feature only for the next couple of years. Also because this feature requires a variable refresh rate display and like I told you I don't see Apple doing it from 1 to 60 Hz. They will need to put the ProMotion panel that the iPhone Pro models have and I don't see that happening in the next couple of years. So yeah, no always on display, no ProMotion for the iPhone 15 and 15 Plus. Now, let's talk about the iPhone 15's most important features and upgrades, the camera. The camera is always the biggest thing on an event. If you take notice, all the events spend like half the event of presenting the iPhone talking about the cameras, because this is the most important upgrade that Apple can do every single year. The cameras are the, one of the only, maybe the display is the second and battery life is the third, but one of the only features that make people from last year upgrade, if the camera upgrade is really that good. So, this year, we are rumored to get new sensors for the iPhone 15 and 15 Plus, so the 48 megapixel sensor present on the iPhone 14 Pro and Pro Max will be coming to the normal iPhones. And of course, the iPhone 15 Pro Max is rumored to have a periscope lens. This year, I want Apple to focus more on optimization, not on hardware improvements. Yes, a periscope lens is cool, but I want the 48 megapixel sensor that Apple puts on the iPhone 14 Pro and Pro Max to be even better. And now, nowadays, is not as well optimized as I would like it to be. So please Apple, make the next camera even better and even better optimized. So in every situation, never fails, never is out of focus. The colors are always correct. So make the 48 megapixel sensor as reliable as your old iPhone 13 Pro Max's 12 megapixel sensor. As for the ultra wide camera and the telephoto, completely remove the telephoto camera, add a periscope lens like a five to six X periscope lens and make the ultra wide camera much, much better. I don't need a wider camera, I just need a way better low light camera. Currently, the ultra wide camera on low light kind of falls off when compared to the normal wide camera or the, even the telephoto. So make the telephoto camera a periscope lens, make it way better for night photography, and of course, improve your ultra wide camera. You can only do this on the pro models if it means like you need to put it more expensive parts on it, but I would like to see a new ultra wide camera and a new sensor optimization all around the lineup. So I want the iPhone 15, to focus on camera optimization and not camera hardware improvements. You know what I mean? And the last thing, one thing that I will make you so excited is the battery life and the battery health. Currently, we have so many complaints and many controversy about the iPhone 14 Pro and Pro Max's battery health gate. So this means that the battery health of your iPhone will drop a lot. 
I've seen some cases where the battery health of some iPhone 14 Pro and Pro Maxes has dropped more than 10% in less than one year. And this is an extreme case. For example, Sam from iUpdate has only 88% in less than one year. That's crazy. For my last year, I have around 98%. My brother has an iPhone 14 Pro for the same amount of time and it has 100% of battery health and he uses that phone like eight hours a day. So I don't understand how can these iPhones have this problem. Maybe it's just a defective unit. Maybe it's just a defect on the batteries on the US phones. I'm not sure. One thing's for sure though, the next iPhone 15s will have better battery life. And that's because of the new and improved A17 chip that will focus on a three nanometer architecture, which will make it even more efficient and even more powerful, but also it's coming with bigger batteries. Yes, the iPhone 15 and 15 Plus, together with the iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max, will have bigger batteries. And I'm so, so excited. According to leaks, the average increase in size of the battery life will be around 18%. So the battery cell will have around 80% bigger capacity. And this is really exciting because if you make calculations, it will be around more, around 500 million pairs, more 600 close to that, which is a ton. For, for example, an iPhone 14 Pro Max, currently I think it has around almost 4,000 million pairs of capacity. So around 38, 3,900. But with this increasing battery life, it will go around to 4,300 million pairs of battery. That's a huge battery for an iPhone, which is way more optimized than an Android phone. But let's see if these leaks come true, because this is my biggest request. Make the iPhone 15 Pro Max battery the best battery ever on a phone. And of course, make it last two days, two solid days of use. That would be a groundbreaking achievement on an iPhone ever. So let me know in the comments below what you think. Do not forget to take all these leaks that I talked about today with a huge grain of salt. We don't know anything unless Apple has confirmed it. So all of these are speculation, all of these are leaks. Just it, leaks. And we find out if they are true or not in the next couple of two weeks. So be excited, mark your calendars on the second Tuesday of September because the iPhone event is coming. We should get the invites next week or maybe in the next couple of days. So I'm really, really excited. Do not forget to drop a like down below, subscribe to the channel, this has been Texas Talking to you here. Bye-bye.